Hi guys and welcome to this video for the AutoHotKey tutorials for beginners. Um, in this particular video we're gonna just simply make a recap of everything we learned up to now, which is just simply how to mess with variables, how to set them up, use them, and um, the if and else statements. i also going to um, show the input box command, which is very, actually is a very fun command to use in some ways. Um, and the uh, the reason why I'm doing this particular program, it is just kind of like a little review of a little script that I made, is because somebody asked me if it was possible to make like a questionnaire on our hotkey, which is perfectly easily uh, done. Um, I will not use a GUI in this particular example, but I will later on when we enter into the GUI section. Now, first of all, let's discuss this green area in here. Of course, those are comments. And it is very important to put comments on your scripts because um, you don't know who is going to see your code later on. And actually, even if you are going to ask for help, it is very helpful to have little comments throughout the code to see what it does, um, just short descriptions. And I just wanted to uh, make, a, make a statement of how important commenting your code is. Not only for yourself, sometimes you will forget what you did. Um, and just a little comment to remind you what it is is amazingly helpful but also for other people that might look at your code and trust me somebody else will, will look at your code eventually so basically we're gonna start with um, let me introduce the input box command um, there are two commands in um, our hotkey one is input and the other one is input box um, the first one just simply grabs whatever the user types there is no um, interaction, there is no window, there is no nothing. You just simply put that command and now the hotkey starts grabbing what the user is typing. But input box, which is the one that I'm going to be using, um, you can put a title, uh, some text. I'm sorry, you have to start with a variable actually. Um, first of all, input box, then the variable where you're going to store whatever the user typed a title and some text those are you know the most used command and when you run it what you get is this little box which of course the title some text whatever you type and an area for the user to type whatever he wants whatever the user types in here and hits OK is going to be saved into var in this particular case you can put whatever name you want in there so um, that command is the one that I'm going to be using throughout this particular script to to ask questions and at the same time expect answers so first of all I showed a, mes a message box to the user as you can see I'm actually forcing an expression here um, the reason why I do this is because I wanted to concatenate lines and basically in our hotkey if you start a line with a dot or a comma um, it will that line will be concatenated with the previous line and for that reason, our hotkey is going to look at that like one complete line, one straight line, and that's the reason why I have to escape some characters. In this case, I'm escape, escaping the, the new line character, um, which you do that by doing back tick and then an N, and that will make a new line here. Because again, if you message box that without the new lines, it is going to look like one, uh, you know, one line. Um, but this will create like if somebody hit enter in there, right? So um, after that, I'm just going to ask a question. As you can see, I have a title. I have the answer that the person types in is going to be stored in answer here. And then I ask, you know, the question, whatever it is. Now, there's some additional options here, as you can see. If you want more information about all the options that the input box can take, just go to the help file put input box and you will see that it is um, the command goes as, as follows you put input box you have to put the name on a, of a variable in which you're going to store the information that the user typed which is not optional you have to do that but after those two everything else like the title the prompt um, the command hide and everything else is just simply optional that's what those brackets mean everything in brackets is just simply optional um, in my case, I decided to put a title, the prompt, this command, I'm not using it, which is why it is empty in here. 
I put two commas there, it is not an accident. If you're gonna leave that uh, command um, blank, you have to keep the commas in this particular case. Then I use the width and height, and then everything else, which is at the end, I just simply leave it blank. I'm not using anything else from, you know, the X and Y and font and everything else. So basically that's how that command works. Um, and the script goes on that what it does is that after the user enters something and hit OK, the information is stored in answer, as I mentioned before. Now I'm using the if and else statement to check whether that answer was correct or not. And in this particular case, I'm just simply checking if answer contains all, every, or 12. It doesn't matter what the user types. If inside what he typed exists the word all, every, or the number 12, it is going to say, it is going to execute this, this um, block of coding here. Now, note that if you have more than one line of code, you need to use the braces as I show in here. If you only have one line, you can just simply use you know, put the one line, that's it. Now, what the code does is that it increments a variable called correct by one. That's what this plus plus uh, is doing. So it's grabbing that particular variable and increments it to one. So whenever the user um, gives a correct answer, this particular variable is gonna go up by one. You will see later on for what. So if in case it is not correct, it just simply displays the message box. It doesn't increment the correct variable. So we do the same. We have, we have an input box that expects a, uh, an answer here for question number two, which is this particular question. And then the if and else statements is basically the same. In this case, I'm forcing an expression with those two parentheses. Then I say answer equals one hour or answer equals one space HR or answer equals one HR. Now, few things to note here. First of all, you can use the shorthand version of or, or you can use the operand or normally, and you can actually mix them. You can just simply use them both at the same time. It doesn't matter. Second thing is that as I um, forced an expression here, whenever I refer to a string, I have to put quotation marks around it. So answer here is a variable and this is a string. If you put something without quotation marks, it's going to be treated as a variable name because you are within an expression. That is something that you have to keep in mind. So if the answer is correct, if the answer contains any of those, right, if the answer is one of those, it is going to be correct. It's going to be incremented by one in here. It's going to show a message. If not, it is not going to increment correct. Same for question number three. In this case, we're going to do the same as before. It's going to say if answer contains one hour or HR. And now, as you might already thought of, it is actually kind of the same saying the or statements here, or just simply saying contains. Now, here's a little detail. If the answer that the user gave is only HR, it doesn't have anything else than those two 